I just read in the newspaper that uh, there's this book coming, The War of the Brothers, I think it's called, and they portray William as this anger, uh, this man with anger issues, and and that crazy Markle was treated appallingly. Um, and that Prince Charles, of course, is just there. I have been quite um, observing everything for quite some time. And it's, it is um, disconcerting to see how Charles and Harry are so hell-bent in damaging Prince William's reputation image. Now, from what I read about this author uh, who's doing the book, he talks that William, Prince William, His Royal Highness Prince William, should uh, do more to mend um, the relationship between him and Harry, and that Charles is just there. Okay, let's analyze that for a little bit. Prince Charles is the father of the two. Prince Charles is supposed to, you know, unless people get together and ban him or get a parliament, get parliament to change the laws of succession, which is not hard if there is true intent. Prince Charles, in all purpose, will be the next king of England. So where is his responsibility in all of this situation? Why hasn't he taken steps to protect the monarchy's image? Because this is not about his image. This is about the monarchy's image in the UK, for that matter. Um, where is his responsibility also as a father? Where is it? Why, why isn't this author saying that Prince Charles should step up and take charge of the situation because it's Charles' responsibility to handle it, and yet everything is heaped on Prince William. Why? So is this what we are to expect of Prince Charles, how everybody do not make him accountable nor responsible for anything that happens? So this is a great, this is a really awful place for Prince William to be in because um, everything that's bad, it's blamed on him. While Prince Charles is not even mentioned anywhere. You know, it's, it's something that has been plaguing me for quite some time. Because why, why are they doing that? There is a concerted effort around everybody, around Prince William, by many people. Oh, he's not speaking to his father. Quite rightly so. Because he must know that Prince Charles is funding everything that Harry is doing. Because they haven't got millions. They haven't got millions. And by the way, Frogmore Cottage still hasn't been fully paid. It's very shady. And the fact that the royal family has not spoken about it, nor confirmed anything, nor the government either, it's because there is something quite shady going on there. Why is the author of this so-called book so willing or so eager to heap all the blame on Prince William? Prince William is in a really uncomfortable position because he can't do very much unless if he does something, it'll be, you know, because he, I, from the way I see, he's very dutiful. He, he really does love the monarchy. He loves his grandmother. He respects the UK. He loves the UK public. He really is proud of his country. Um, so if he does something, act proactively, his father will look bad. He will, it will, and it's not his place because you see that the, the royal family is not based on merit, unfortunately. It's based on line of succession and your place in, in that line. So even if he wants to do something, if he does anything, it will be very detrimental to Charles, his father, because he knows what's going on. So he can't really do much, and yet Prince Charles and Harry are heaping and banging on his reputation. I really think that's an unfair thing, and I hope that you know Parliament would amend the line, uh, the law of succession, because that can be done. People say, "Oh, it's so difficult." It's not. It's not because it, it can be done. They have changed the law of succession many times. It's not. It's not. It's nothing new. 
you know, nothing is written on stone. This author also talks about Meghan Markle being such an asset to the royal family. Okay. Why? If anything, I think she's a huge liability. She's, you know, she's a ticking time bomb in the sense that she has lied so much. You know, the royal family has done as much as they, as they could to protect, to make sure that all her lies don't come out. But this woman is a complete liability. It is. You know, uh, the, and this author goes, oh, they had this great opportunity to have this woman w with a black mother. Because let's face it, Meghan Markle is whiter than I am. I mean, I am not, I, I guess you might consider I'm white, but I am actually there. I have four, four different backgrounds. Four, my grandparents are from different places than my parents. Um, but Meghan Markle is whiter than me. You know, and I, even though I am very pale, you know, uh, I have never ticked the white box. I've always ticked um, mixed race. So up to the age of 37, Meghan Markle identified herself legally and socially as a white woman. So I am, I, you know, I'm trying to come to terms with what this, um, this author is trying to say, because if Meghan Markle's only worth is that her mother is black. That means that that for me in itself is very racist to say that that Meghan Markle is an asset because her mother is black. It's not based on Meghan Markle's achievements. It's not based on anything really. She didn't give up a career. She had none. Um, the most things that she's done is that hamburger commercial. Um, uh, the supporting role in, in, the, in Suits, which, by the way, was coming to an end. She only got a more prominent role when she was, um, she was dating Prince Harry. Um, I mean, what, I'm trying to think what was her worth. They talk about that commercial uh, that she influenced when she was 11 years old or something like that about changing the name. It wasn't her. It was a class project. And by the way, the company... It's not because they received a letter from an 11 year old, they're gonna change the entire campaign. That's not how it works. They must have been, they must have had it in the works for quite some time, you know? So it just happens that when she got it, you know, it probably made sense for marketing, uh, from the marketing perspective, to use her letter or the letter, you know, it was a school project. They talk about her feeding the homeless. Well, in school, when he, she was in high school, she had to do it. It was part of the curriculum of the school. Uh, when she did it in, in suits, I'm pretty sure she was trying to raise her profile. Oh, I'm so good because she won't, yeah, she doesn't do anything that is truly charitable. Everything she does is to increase her profile. So I am trying to think what, 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 what is her worth? Because if it's only that her mother is black, even though Meghan Markle herself never ever um, um, declared herself even biracial, you know, in anything, that's not nothing to brag about, you know. So that means that somebody else's skin color is being used to raise their profile. Okay, let, I'm gonna let you wonder with that one. Um, now, I was once hired. Uh, at a very, in a very, you know, at a very good company, um, in a very good position with a lot of money. Um, I was, I was a very, I am a very good worker. I own two companies now, but at that time, I was a, an employee, and I, I mean, I, I did have a good CV. But I remember, I was sitting uh, in line uh, waiting for my my, my interview. And this guy was sitting right next to me. And, you know, we got talking. And when I saw his CV, I said, oh, there's no way I'm going to get there. You know, there's no way I'm going to get this job. But I'm going to go through with the interview because there were, he was so, so, at least according to what the CV said, he was, you know, much more experienced than I and, and everything. Anyways, I was really shocked, shocked when I got the job. 
I mean, I was pleased, but I got shocked. I was shocked. And then within about two, three weeks, I found out that the reason they had hired me is because first I was a female from what they consider an ethnic minority. <laughs> so I ticked the box six. You know what I did? I quit because I would have been so embarrassed. I was embarrassed because I felt that it, they didn't hire me because of of. I had the credentials for that, and I felt that somebody who actually had better credentials than me would have gotten that job. I remember being called into the human resources office, and they said, but why are you quitting? I said, and they said, well, I know that you hire me only because of affirmative action, and I'm not down with it. I, I, I'm, and they said, yeah, but you're doing a great job. And I said, yeah, but it's not, I, you know, if the motives and intentions are not true, it, nothing, nothing, nothing good comes out of it. So... Meghan Markle is, is, according to the author, that she should have been treated specially. First of all, again, I repeat, the monarchy is not about, it's about place in line of the success, your place in the queue, basically. So let's analyze that. Harry was six in line to the throne, um, minor royal. Um, and I mean, they were giving a platform. They were giving a lot, too. They were giving a lot financially. His wedding was more expensive than Prince William's. I mean, they got everything they wanted. The only thing they didn't get is to be more important than Prince William and Catherine. So, I mean, but they were not happy with that because they would never intend it. They never intended to stay in the royal family. Meghan Markle never saw the royal family as a career, as a career. She always saw it as, I'm going to get this guy. I'm going to get the titles. I'm going to raise my profile and I'm heading back to California and screw everybody of you. You know when she didn't bow to the queen when she got out of the, when she, when her, uh, during her wedding ceremony, people said uh, it was due to nerves. Are we really going to pretend that that 37-year-old shark uh, who's been around the block in a lot of couches too, well, a lot of casting couches too, was nervous and didn't want to bow to the queen? Absolutely not. She just said, screw you, I don't have to bow to you anymore. That was her message. And everything they did from that point on, and even before, was to swindle the United Kingdom, <coughs> excuse me, to swindle the monarchy. And... Now this guy, and by the way, to film everybody along the way so they can sell all the, all the footage for a lot of money, to lie and falsely accuse the press, the UK, the monarchy, and anybody who challenged them of racism or invasion of privacy when they have clearly they never wanted any privacy. People say, oh, Meghan Markle is having a hard time. She didn't understand how things are in the UK. She knew. She just didn't care because she was never intending to follow any other rules. So how can this author now come and say that they should have done more for her when she never intended to stay in the UK? Doesn't matter what you give a person. If, if that person had no, has no intentions of doing anything for you or acting in such a way, there's nothing you can give them. And if you do, they will abuse that as, as they did. Now, Harry and Meghan are, just did this thing about Black Month that it came to their attention. The Black Month has been around in England for at least 30 years. And if I recall correctly, Meghan Markle was in the UK in 2017, 2018, and 2019. Black Month hasn't gone away. It's just that now it's relevant for them to use Black Month to talk about it, to get themselves in the newspaper. What is it going to take now for Parliament to step in? Because Prince Charles is not. Prince Charles is feeding all of this. He's not doing anything and he's damaging Prince William's reputation. This is really what is happening. Because he's so concerned about himself and Camilla and because he knows that Prince William, whether Prince William wants it or not, it is his rival. Because nobody believes in Prince Charles. He has no morals. She, he has... He's an egotistical, arrogant man with no morals. Um, and he knows that Prince William is very well loved. So what is it going to take for Parliament to step in and protect the monarchy from Prince Charles and Prince Harry? What is it going to take?
because the monarchy should be an institution that the British people are proud of. Right now, you know, before when you used to think monarchy, you used to think um, something positive, beautiful. Now when you think of the monarchy, all you think is all the nastiness about Harry and Meghan and, and, and Prince Charles that are nasty. There is so much going on, you know. Where is the money from the charity? Take away those goddamn titles. They have misused uh, the race card. They have slander. And they're going to commit perjury with that book when they, when they come up there. I really hope the Mail on Sunday or the National Press or whatever it is that they're suing, they don't settle and they take them to court because Meghan Markle will end up in jail. But anyways, Parliament has to step in now to protect the monarchy and to protect the UK public. You know, the UK public, they have been played. And the reputation, you know, it's, 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 <laughs> it's in tatters. And Harry and Meghan are still on the royal website. I really think that Her, Her Majesty the Queen is no longer taking uh, decisions and it's up to Charles. And this is why you have that mess. I really hope they get things together with Parliament. I feel for you, UK, from one Canadian. I really do.